These days, there are plenty of things to worry about, but keeping pests out of your home shouldn't be one of them. That's why you need Massey Services. Massey eliminates pests before they get inside. They start by carefully inspecting the inside and outside of your home and then focus customized treatments on the outside. Best of all, your satisfaction is guaranteed or your money back. That's the Massey difference. Expect more and get it. Are you struggling to conceive? You have options, and at Piedmont Reproductive Endocrinology Group, we'll make sure you have the guidance and support you need. Preg is known for individualized fertility care that's unique to every patient. We take the time to provide a reassuring and empowering experience because we believe that you deserve nothing less. Let us help you on your journey to parenthood. Visit us at pregonline.com to learn more. Get the guidance and support you need at Piedmont Reproductive Endocrinology Group. Because it's Friday, Friday night, Friday, 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 Friday night. Thank goodness it's Friday. Happy Friday. It's Friday? Already? First things first. Yeah. Let's get good drunk. Let's get Today is the day of saying, hey, yippee, hey, yippee. This is Sparta. Oh, noises. Ah, yes. We made it. We finally made it. We have made it to the Friday episode. On tonight's episode Big Drewski and Casper break down some of the premier matchups in college football this upcoming weekend. Spreads, over slash unders, and of course your weekly pick-ins. Today's episode is sponsored by The Depot Print House, www.staycating.com, and True Tennessee and Clothing Company. Make sure you like, subscribe, and leave the boys a review, because again, I can't stress this enough, but they have literally no clue what they are doing. Let's get on into today's show. Welcome, 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 baby, to the Little Treasury Show. We're at, like, how many full episodes do we have now, Casperoni? I don't even know. We're up, uh, we're up there. Total. We're getting we're getting darn we're getting, near hundred. We, we really need to probably get a count on that tomorrow. Yeah, we're not there we, yet. We're, I think we're around like eighty four. I think is about where we're at. I was gonna say because for the numero one hundred oh, we may need to get old T Fitty back on here. Josh, they can make fun of us for having nothing to do with our lives for a hundred episodes. Uh, I might act like Josh did on this episode, just for the record. (laughs) Oh, just get completely (laughs) blasted. We are on episode. We've done 76 episodes. So you were off by just a smidgen, but uh, welcome, welcome, welcome baby to the little tangerine show. Um, I am your host, big Drewski. And I have with me, semi always my co-host Casper with the most. Now, just full disclosure, Casper Rooney's a little emotional right now. We are currently watching the Braves oh, just get absolutely worked. Um, and the yes. Braves is our baseball team, which we did find out that old J.D. Wyatt, he has terrible taste in football teams <clears throat> Amen. So in South Carolina. Amen. Uh, but we all share a love for the uh, Atlanta Braves, so that's always cool. But uh, yeah. way, apparently he likes the Cowboys, too, so he really has a bad taste in football teams. Uh, he just makes absolutely poor decisions. If you didn't know, guys, the, ta- the Dallas Cowboys is not a football team. It is a rating because they get one star because they <laughs> suck amen oh, just kidding it's just fun to make fun of the cowboys as a tennessee vols fan i can relate to just every year being your year and then four games in being like well we've always got next year oh i guess you hadn't seen his comments on my facebook but he basically said that today <laughs> he's like it's tennessee and atlanta not like the cowboys <laughs> although to be honest with you i just like bringing my life pain because I root for the Vols and the Titans, so that's pretty. <clears throat> it's pretty rough. Uh, I used to drink a lot until I made my way back to the Lord, and now I don't drink as much. <laughs> yeah. Um, by the way, I heard today on the on this crazy conference call phone thing I get on that Derrick Henry is trash now. Is that accurate? Um, to specifically washed up, I think was the term used. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, kind of like that Xfinity driver we know. Trevor Bain. <laughs> Just kidding. We don't know him. 
<laughs> he used to make a good cup of coffee, and then he sold it. <laughs> he did sell it. He probably got a lot of money for it. Their coffee's pretty decent, just for the record, at Mahalo. Y'all should check it out if you live in Knoxville. Hey, this little tangerine show, we can talk about Knoxville now. We can. So, uh, if you did not listen to the last episode, first off, you're dead to me. Um, hey, man. Just kidding. So, uh, but second off, uh, we did announce that... So, me and Casper started a new podcast show it is called CFB Top 25. That's where we're going to do all of our deep, in-depth breakdowns of anything and everything college football relating to the Top 25 with the goal of making you sound just smart enough to sound good at the water cooler, like you know what you're talking about. Which, um, you know, when Casper first hopped on here, that was like his main goal, is just fire from the hip and make it sound good. <laughs> but uh, just kidding. But uh, yeah, so we started a new uh the new podcast please do check it out but we're going to revert this podcast back to tennessee balls related stuff and just whatever we feel like talking about because again you know somebody from spartanburg doesn't know that like you know western avenue is covered with crackheads they don't know that they don't know what's amazing about like no. gus's good times deli or gus's chicken they don't get those references you know mm. so that's that's what we're here for we're here to give back to you guys our Tennessee people, which by the way, me and Casper both uh, did not plan it, but we're repping our uh, true Tennessean merch. How about that? Yeah, nothing like being a true Tennessee and eat some of that Gus's chicken. I got some yesterday for lunch. Did you ever post a picture on the socials? No, I forgot. I did take the picture. I will post it later. But dude, that stuff is just, it's amazing. And and their sides, man. I went with four sides because I'm a fatty. And I just couldn't decide. <laughs> I got fried okra, mac and cheese, slaw, and baked beans, and every single bite of all of it was fantastic. I mean, it's mm. just, that food over there is so good, man. I, it's it's like my favorite place to eat in Knoxville, honestly. Maybe it is very very high quality. But moving on into the show, I think we got a pretty good uh, we got a pretty good little mix for you guys. Uh, we are going to try to keep these from being two hours like we have been in the past again. If you want to get into the deep football breakdowns, uh, check out the other show. So, this weekend plans, uh, I am going, uh, this weekend's going to be one of those weird weekends. So, Saturday, we're probably going to go up to the campground with uh, my dad and stepmom. Um, so, I'm going to be probably watching like game day from my phone. Um, gonna try to catch as much football as I can, but we're just gonna hang out with the family, then probably try to get back before Tennessee kickoff. If not, we'll be trying to watch it up at the campground, but uh, it's gonna be a good time, good old fashioned time. Hey, listen, going to the campground, worship in the wilderness, nothing wrong with that ever. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, yeah, I am headed down to the old Chattanooga, Tennessee, the old stomping grounds there. I kind of have a couple goals this weekend. Um, my brother's birthday is this week. I'd really like to go fishing. I know that really would excite you, and I haven't told you that, but I'm going to try to go fishing for a couple hours at some point, Saturday, Sunday, whatever. I'll definitely uh, be a little jealous. My awesome nephew, Ryan and Everett, have a birthday this weekend, so we're going to party. Um, oh. I haven't even told you this yet, but so their birthday party, they're turning seven and eight. It is a Nerf war party that's actually pretty hardcore and you know the thing that's underrated about kids parties is you have every excuse in the world to eat dino nuggies and drink capri sun yep. and uh people sleep on capri sun we forgot yeah. how good it is but on the rare occasion that i stumble upon one i really thoroughly enjoy it because it's it's yeah. low-key amazing <laughs> it's still like yeah. you know your love for it never disappears but so nerf my- war my question back to the Nerf War, it, uh, this is for the, the listeners of the LTS. Should I or should I not, as a 29-year-old for five more day male, stop in at the nearest Walmart and spend as much money as I have in my bank account on the biggest Nerf gun they have before I show mean, up at this party or not? I can't decide. What's the appropriate answer? Uh, let us know at uh, the little tangerine show on Facebook dot com. But um, other than I that, think man, I'm not going to say drain the bank account, but to quote a philosophist, that can do that. To quote a philosophist that that we both are semi aware of, it's just money. It's just stuff. <laughs> you can't take it with you when you go. You know, I've heard that from a very smart businessman. Um. 
<laughs> yeah, we'll hey, see what happens. We'll see. Just what like happens. just like Kevin Bozeman said, there is no greater feeling than betting large sums of money that you do not have. Just yeah. let it go. Yeah, you that's know? why I'm I'm betting mine on. Well, we'll talk about it later. Anyways, so I'm pretty excited about their birthday party for real. I do. I, my nephews are awesome, and I did shout them out by name because they will listen to this podcast. Just for the record, and uh, oh happy, yes, yeah, happy birthday to them and. uh Big Big Drewski says happy birthday to y'all too. Happy, I know you don't know him, but happy birthday, this man! This is so Uncle Casper's buddy, and you're gonna says take happy birthday to you. And he's worldwide famous. Okay, I don't I don't know about that, but I do know that between the two of us, we got about twenty five thousand and something yeah. followers. <laughs> East Tennessee famous. Sometimes people see me at the Weigels over there on Cedar Bluff, and they know who I am. And don't say <laughs> anything, but oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. There, you know, there's oh. nothing. There's nothing like when two semi-famous local celebrities bump into each other. <laughs> <laughs> it's se- in a serendipitous fashion. Look at each other from across the Woggles, and then choose to not say anything going about their day. <laughs> 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 oh, and see, that's what's beautiful about us going back local with the little tangerine show because, yeah. like, nobody in like you know Tuscaloosa is going to know what Woggles is, and if they come here, they're going to be like, "What's a Weagles?" <laughs> Weagles. Nine times out of ten, it's Weagles. When we moved here, my wife said Weagles, not Weagles. I knew it was Weagles, but she said Weagles, and she's like half from Knoxville. What a shame. But other than that, I'm looking forward to the weekend. I'm going to be watching some racing this weekend, too. Obviously, I'm an NASCAR diehard. Hopefully, at this point, looking like I'm going to be watching the Braves on Saturday. Fingers crossed. We're going to need a win. Uh, guys, just for the record, we record this on Wednesday, and the Braves are losing 10-2 to two going in the ninth inning. I'm not excited about it. Do but, you uh, want to maybe say just a quick word about racing, something that you're looking forward to? Uh, they're at Vegas this week. so. Oh, God, please, no, no. No, I, I'm sorry. I had to set you up, for the, but no, give, give us a quick now. Yes. Yes. Nothing like a good cheap sound effect. No, give us like a, you know, 15 second NASCAR plug. If you don't chew big red, then f- you <laughs> fine. That's, you know, <clears throat> good enough all right anyways enough. moving on sorry this has been a really childish show i'm I, just for the record i am super excited that we move back to little tangerine show so we can do this junk again this is the fun part of the show so it really truly uh, yeah. is and this has already been fun just for the record yeah. 10 minutes in but uh so there i actually had a semi cohesive thought that i was going to bring up in regards to something you were talking about but it's gone so I, now, Casper's kind of excited about this one, so I'm going to go ahead and let him cue it up here in a second, but we're going to get into one of our favorite segments. It's time for one of Big Drewski and Casper's favorite segments, called the Dumbass Comment of the Week. Way to go, a-hole! Hey! Yeah. Okay, so you found one, you sent it to me, I said, let's let her rip, Tater Chip. So, first of all, a couple things that all of you listeners need to know. Big Drewski's always slacking. He acts like he's got something to do during the week, even though he just sits around and doesn't do anything. Um, <laughs> I went out and found this for y'all because a lot of people have been sending messages asking for this segment to come back because it's a great segment name, and everybody loves that video. So, um, But we did steal this from ESPN's posts on Instagram, but here is the comment of the week. The post says, Deion Sanders filed for new trademarks, including... Give me my theme music, Bull Junk, Prime Time by Deion Sanders. And there was multiple more on the next page. But um, somebody named uh, By Ron whatever says uh, his trademark should be losing. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm confused. So Deion Sanders goes to Colorado, a 1-11 football team last year. one and 11. Hey, by the way, those of you that see us on video, ignore my terrible squiggly line. I was homeschooled. <laughs> um, yeah. But uh, Deion Sanders goes to Colorado. Colorado's a 1 and 11 last year, right? Is that is that correct? Uh, yeah, they won one game. Okay. And uh, how many have they won now? Uh, they're up to four because okay. right. I, so I know that specifically because they put a lot games, of games. Six games into the season, halfway through the season. They've won three more games than they won last year, including beating how many ranked teams? Two, three? I mean, 
I mean, at the time that TCU but, win was true, like it kind of shook the world, what, the world for a second there. What yeah. losing has Coach Prime done? You know, playing in a Super Bowl, uh, playing in a, uh, you know, World Series, uh, taking his kids to school, uh, being a father. Well, I mean, he also went Man. down and turned Jackson State around, which is kind of underrated. Yeah, we're getting there. We're getting there. So MTV, he was on MTV for a while. Apparently, I didn't even know that till recently. But apparently, he's on MTV for a while with his his kids, and you know, then he goes to Jackson State, turns that thing around. Now he's gone to Colorado, taking a Twitter account to over uh, Instagram. I'm sorry, I lost say Instagram account went over a million followers. The only other three football teams that have that is like Alabama. Ohio State, Michigan, or something like that. I mean, that's – this man has completely put Colorado on the map. Colorado, when I used to play NCAA 2005 or whatever on my game <laughs> as a child or my Nintendo Wii, whatever I had it for, 2012, Colorado is like the one of the worst teams. Like, I'm just going to be Colorado because they're black and gold, which is kind of cool. Now they're winning football games and selling out stadiums. He's yeah, I mean, not losing at anything. Even when they went to Oregon, that was like the six biggest attendance uh, like game in, yeah. in their home stadium history. I mean, that's just the prime effect. Let's just look yeah. at the screenshot I sent you. This thing was posted, and within three hours, it has 3,739 comments, two thousand or 240,000 likes. What's I mean, he yeah. losing at? Uh, not much. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> like jeez man like come on dude like anyway so that's my dumb but comment of the week and uh yeah i was excited thank you for letting me let me contribute i mean it, 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 it to me it is pretty i mean people just don't like people that are confident in what they're what they can do and that if they can back it up they just cannot stand that i mean it, you look at anybody in like history if they're confident and they can back it up, and they don't care what you think. People just hate them, and I, I mean, I don't know. I to me, I I think it's great. Like, I mean, literally, it's debatable. But like, Pat McAfee and Deion Sanders may or may not have like I don't want to say saved college football. Revived, revived is the word we're going to use. Yes, revived, revived is a you very. Like that? I do like that. That's a very, very good take. Um, but yeah, so uh, if you guys see anything that you think is pretty worthy of, you know, being a uh, dumbass comment of the week, please tag us. Uh, screenshot it. Screenshot it, it, send it to us. Tag the Little Tangerine Show. Tag me, Big Drewski, or Casper, the, the host. Uh, either way, tag us because we want to know. But uh, we're going to – well, did you have any other, like, random – I mean, we can do it again at the end, but did, did you have any other stuff you want to talk about besides the Braves getting spanked right now? I'm just <laughs> pumped that we're here doing this little tangerine show. Back it's, it is. It, it feels good. I did not know this morning we talked about this. This was going to feel as good. Did you? No, I didn't. So, I mean, thank, I, I'm thank glad, this, I'm glad that I the camera say. cuts it off a little bit, but my nipples were kind of hard when we first started. It just it <sighs> got me yeah. excited, you know. So yeah, I'm but, pumped, man. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to give you guys, give the people what they want. We're going to give you that Tennessee Vols breakdown, and I guess we'll probably talk about some other. Oh, we got our locks of the week and our weekly pickums, baby. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So don't go nowhere. We're going to be right back. These days, there are plenty of things to worry about, but keeping pests out of your home shouldn't be one of them. That's why you need Massey Services. Massey eliminates pests before they get inside. They start by carefully inspecting the inside and outside of your home, and then focus customized treatments on the outside. Best of all, your satisfaction is guaranteed or your money back. That's the Massey difference. Expect more and get it. Welcome, welcome back, baby, to the Little Tangerine Show. If you hadn't already, click like, click subscribe. Uh, also, shout out to our sponsors, Stakeating.com. Uh, nationally known, locally owned, baby. One of the best places to go if you want to 
book a short term stay. Also, True Tennessee and Clothing dot com. Um, we are massive. These are like literally one. This is one of the most comfortable shirts I've like, No joke. Not even. Awesome. I love not, it. I actually wore that the True Tennessee and for like fifty percent of my vacation. It was yeah. it was that comfortable. Um, and also. The Depot Print House located off of, uh, is it, it's East Emory Emory Road. Road? East yep. or West? East. West. East. West, West no, sorry. West Emory Road in Powell, Tennessee. Close to the uh, high school, y'all. Yeah. Uh, I mean, anything you need, baby, stickers, hats. I mean, they everything's custom, too. They hand draw a lot of their stuff. It's pretty dope. Uh, they actually have some cool designs, too, if you just want to buy them to support local. So, um, we are going to get into one of y'all's favorite segments, the weekly pickums, baby. Um, so we decided, and again, we're not going to go super in depth. If you want to listen to that, go to the other show. Um, but we decided that we're going to continue to do that. Cause I know you guys like that. Um, but if you want to play, I mean, feel free. I know that it's, we're middle of the way through the season, but the end of the season winner wins a hundred bucks, baby www.bigdrewski.com. It's literally on the uh, main page. For those of you that may be watching this video, it has this picture on it. But uh, just find the, uh, there's like a picture of mine and Casper's SEC predictions of the year. Um, but click on that and you can get in and join. It's all through ESPN too, so it's on the up and up. But now the Tennessee Vols is actually in the official weekly pickums, So we're going to skip that one. And then we'll come back and do our full breakdown. But uh, old David Down's still in first, right? Yes, sir. David Down is leading me, who is in second. He's leading me by about four or five games. He is, like, absolutely killing it. By the way, shout out David Down. Get to feeling better, buddy. Um, we're not going to blast your personal stuff on the interwebs here. But, you know, he uh, he got some some – some work done as far as, you know, getting, getting some, some, some issues with his health cleared up. We're super happy to see him getting back on his feet. Uh, can't wait for him to uh, get back to work and trash talk us. Uh, hey man, we been need to see you, pretty buddy. good at it. You. Now your boy <laughs> was the winner last week. That's the first <laughs> time. That <laughs> winner was six out of 10. Come on, bro. Hey oh, baby, man. struggle win, still a win by God. <laughs> A win, a win, a win. Hey, look, like a I'm a champion, Kentucky fan. I, hey, look, I ain't got I'm a champion of life, baby. Break by. <laughs> we're gonna, okay, we're All gonna right. mount this comeback. Listen, I'm killing it with an 86.7 percent. Uh, yeah, that's not even close to David Down. I think I'm like I don't even know. I don't even want to know how many games I'm behind. David, David Down is in like the top two percent in the country. No joke. I'm like in the top five. So. Yeah, we just need to start getting his list and just like making it sound like we're really smart. But yeah. uh, so we're going to get into these picks. We are on week seven. OK, um, first game up is a riveting matchup between Georgia Southern and James Madison Dukes. James Madison's five and oh, Georgia Southern is four and one. Only 10% of people have picked Georgia Southern. Give me James Madison at home. I'm going to go with the masses. And uh, I just like what they're about. So give me James Madison at home, baby. Duke's all the way. Purple always wins. It looks really good in a Mustang. I mean, I picked them last time, and they they did me right. So we're gonna we're gonna keep it rolling. Now this is you know the probably the biggest matchup of the week. Uh, did we say is game day coming to this one? Game day it will be at Washington for this game. Yes. Okay. I so mean, we got at Washington. Yeah. So we got number eight, Oregon, undefeated, going up against number seven, Washington Huskies at home. For the record, guys, just throwing it out there, this week is actually a very big week with some major playoff implications. Um, just for the record, uh, we're going to get into some of these main games here. But uh, this week right here is really, after this week, the playoff picture is really going to start taking shape. Um, there's a lot of good teams that are still undefeated and some of them are going up against each other. So, um, definitely some good games to watch, but, um, I'm going to go in this, I usually side with the home team. I'm going to go Oregon on the road. Um, I think that they're more solid on defense. Washington hadn't really been tested. 
And uh, yeah, I just I just think Oregon's the the team to beat the Pac-12. Washington proved me wrong though. Feel free. Yeah. So I was gonna go Oregon. I really don't appreciate you picking the same as me. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna go. I, I, I'm, I'm gonna go Oregon as well. I think Oregon has much more defense than Washington has. I think they're kind of gonna overwhelm them. I think this being a 12:30 kickoff game is gonna hurt Washington. If this was a night game, I would go Washington just for the record. And uh, hey, they, they they like to settle on the grass. They're not about yeah. clicks or picks yeah. or any of that yeah. with think, their 8,000 uniform combinations. I think uh, Michael Penix Jr. is gonna run into. Uh, run into a big, big defense he hadn't seen yet. And uh, I'm going to take Oregon. I'm also taking the over in this game. The under over under is at 67. I'm taking the over. I really think this is going to be like a 40 to 51 game. Just kind of, that's kind of my, like a 43, 51 ish type game. I think it's going to be absolutely a lot of scoring, but I think Oregon's defense wins this game in the end. Yeah, uh, I'm with you on that one. A lot of scoring um, and Phoenix is going to hit a wall for sure. Um, moving on, uh, well, we're going to skip Texas A&M at Tennessee. We'll come back to that one. Kansas Jayhawks on the road, 3.30 kickoff. Okay, Kansas Jayhawks are 5-1. and one. They're also ranked number 23 in the country. Um, Oklahoma State is 3-2. and two. Uh, Kansas State or Kansas, I can't remember if I said it, but they're five and one. Eighty-five percent of people have picked them. Listen, I like a little chaos, baby. Give me Oklahoma State Cowboys at home. I'm going with the fifteen percent, baby. Roll it. Yeah, I'm going to uh, Oklahoma State at home too. I think Kansas is kind of. Hit their peak. They t- finally took their L to Texas. They turn around and beat UCF. But uh, I'm give me the Cowboys at home. It's hard to go win at Oklahoma State. Just for the record, that's a, that's a tough place to play. Probably one of the most underrated places to play, in my opinion. Not to mention, Mike Gundy has one of the best mullets in the in the business, and he's not a baby back. You know what? Like old Ewers down there in Texas. He he's been rocking that thing for a while. So give me the mullet and the Cowboys at home, baby. Uh, next game, we have Marshall Thunder and Herd on the road at Georgia State. Uh, both teams are 4-1. and one. However, 73% of the general public has picked Marshall instead of Georgia State. Casper, I'm going to let you go first on this one. What do you think? Yeah, the Henny is not going to be flowing. Give me Thunder and Herd on the road. They had not let me down yet this year when I picked them. I got Marshall. Sometimes I like to let you go first just so I can go against the grain because sometimes you mess things up. But, I mean, here's the thing. I, I think it's going to be a decent game. Matchup predictor has this 51.5% in favor of Marshall. If Oh, well, this is a night game. Ooh, so I had Marshall. Ah, you know, that night game scares me, but I'm going to go ahead and just go with my gut. I'm going to go Marshall on the road. I think that they got more playmakers, but to be honest with you, night game at home in the dome, I think Georgia State could pull that one out. I don't know. But uh, I'm going to stick with my gut. I'm going to go Marshall. Next game up, number 10, USC Trojans going on the road at number 21, Notre Dame Fighting Irish. The Fighting Irish are 5-2. and two. However, they have played a much harder schedule. USC still 6-0. and oh. Um this is a night game, 7.30. I'm going to stick with the theme that we've been having all year. These night games get wet, wild, and crazy. Um, I think Notre Dame is good on both sides of the ball. Give me Notre Dame at home for the night game win. Yeah. Um, Caleb Bloom's going to have the roughest game he's had yet. Sam Hartman's going to have to ball out here, though. I think they're going to come back, bounce back from their loss against Louisville, come out, and uh, I think they're going to sling it, give me Notre Dame at home, and I hate Notre Dame. Mm, but Sam Hartman, that's that ACC quarterback that you like, ACC transfer. I, I mean, really, if you want to be honest, I really think the defense, again, is going to make the difference in this game. And I hate to say that two of the biggest games of the week is going to come down to defense because it sounds so cliche, but I really think this game is going to come down to defense. USC hasn't gone up a def- against a defense yet, and they're, they're about to. So that's what I got. So, uh, moving on, Miami, number 25, Miami Hurricanes with that just absolutely embarrassing loss last week against Georgia Tech. It's going on the road to number 12, North Carolina Tar Heels. This is a 7.30 kickoff as well. Tar Heels are undefeated. They're rolling. Uh, They got a Heisman hopeful. Give me the Tar Heels at home, man. 7.30 night game. Miami obviously doesn't know how to play, you know, 
uh, doesn't know how to pick play calls late <laughs> games. If this one's a tight one, <laughs> I think Carolina's going to win it. But uh, I think it might be a slightly close-ish game. But give me yeah. Carolina at home, not game, baby. So, historically, I know this game pretty well. This game is going to be a field goal game, but I will take Carolina at home. Usually the home team wins this game. They usually win by a field goal, particularly at night. So, give me, give me my Tar Heels. Bye. By about three, I would not take that line of three and a half because it may not be that much. So, uh, yeah, give me the Tar Heels. So, I'm a little disappointed we're picking all the same picks here. You really need to step it up. I, I don't think we picked anything different yet. <laughs> hey, I told you, I, I'm I'm going for wins, baby. None of this, like you know, upsets. What I'm coming in for that late season kill. Uh, mm-hmm. Speaking of night games, seven thirty kickoff. The Mizzou Tigers five and one heading to Lexington. Number 24, Kentucky Wildcats. They are also 5-1 and one with that loss to Georgia. Um, 72% of people have picked Kentucky. Mizzou is sneaky good, especially on defense. But night game at home, Kroger Field is slightly underrated. Give me the Wildcats at home playing in the dirt. Mm. That's the beautiful thing about going first. <laughs> I'm going Missouri on the road at Kentucky. Kentucky's got this trap game for Kentucky. Kentucky's got us coming into town in two weeks. They're off next week. They get off week for Tennessee, which we probably need to talk about when we get to that. But, uh, yeah, give me uh, give me Missouri on the road. I think Missouri's a good team. Took the tough loss to what, LSU. Um, uh, I think it was LSU. Sorry, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to look up my numbers here. Yeah, it was LSU. And uh, I, yeah, I think they're going to outscore Kentucky. I don't think Kentucky's going to be able to get 228 yards. Give me. Mizzou. Who's rambling now? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, next game, 8 p.m., UCLA on the road. Uh, number 18 UCLA on the road versus Oregon State Beavers. 75% of people have picked the Beavers. Both teams are one-loss teams. Um, man, you know, I'm going to stick with the theme, dude. 8 p.m., uh, give me Oregon State at home, dude. UCLA, they're not terrible, but I just don't think they've got much this year. Um, Oregon State, they're riding high on that upset game a week or two back. Uh, late game thriller. Give me Oregon State. All Not right, like a good we're, beaver at night. Right, you know? We're getting where we need to go. Give me UCLA because <laughs> uh, Oregon State sucks. All right, that's all I got. <laughs> oh, so you're going UCLA? Interesting. Listen, these beavers about to get whooped. That's all I'm saying. Give me UCLA. UCLA is a good team. Only game they lost to Utah. I don't know, man. They didn't roll. Them beavers at night get kind of spunky in my personal experience. But moving on. Easy. 8 p.m. kickoff, baby. The Wolf Pack, North Carolina State, is going to number 17, Duke. Duke has proven that they can play football, too. Uh, I think that this is going to be a slobber knocker with this in-state you know, rivalry. Uh, NC State is 4-2. and two. Um, seven percent of people picked them. Duke is four and one. Um, give me Duke, man. I, I like a good Cinderella story, but I, I, they are massively underrated on defense, though. Give me Duke at home, yeah. night game. Uh, let me hold my nose. I hate Duke. Uh, I'll take Duke. Uh, mm. NC State's just not got it going on this year. They haven't looked that hot. They played a lot of night games. They haven't done too good in their night games yet. So give me Duke at home. All right, Casper, I need you to look into the future a little bit. How many total points will be scored in uh, Oregon versus Washington? 81. 81. Um, I am going to say 66. You're telling me you're not going to bet the over on that game? Uh, What was the over again? 67. Okay, give me 68. All right, that's better. Um, yeah, I think oh, yeah. I think our little conference call group that's trying to put up together uh, parlays would probably appreciate that uh, for their group. You know, since we got to band together as a team and try to get this done right, I think that's well. That's because you know uh, the other two members are losing a lot of money right now. While your boy just made two hundred forty yeah. on Prime, baby, four wins. This is a good All time right. for those of you that don't know Tennessee Redline. Be sure to call that if you live in the state of Tennessee and you have a gambling problem. Uh, here's the thing. Daddy didn't raise no quitter. Bad at all. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Don't do that. We have to stress. Easy, Kevin Bozeman. Jesus. We, 
We have to stress. Um, by the way, speaking of betting, I'm just going to go ahead and throw it in here. Let's just go ahead and go for it. Full on sling it, baby. It's time for the lock of the week. At magical time of the week where Big Drewski and Casper dishonor their families by placing betting wagers on college football games. I'm all in. Keep in mind that these two gentlemen are in no way shape or form experts and frankly, have no clue what they are doing. Please follow your state laws and gamble responsibly. I am never going to financially recover from this. Okay, so the point of these lock of the weeks are hopefully to help you guys win money. Now it is of note, I always say dollar five dollars don't bet the house or money that you can't lose now we were on a hot streak and then not so much and then yeah. I, we were close last week but i think we did miss it last week it was close yours yes. hit right on the money you missed, Mine missed. You missed. but yeah. i was smart enough to change colorado to money line that hit so you know well, it is what it is and you're trying to do it again now you, you i'm trying you to do this. it again here's the thing Colorado, well, so is Travis Hunter or Shiloh back? Uh, Travis Hunter is Travis, practicing. Travis Hunter is going to play. That's my opinion. I think Travis Hunter will play this game. And honestly, we can talk about that if you want to, but I really don't think Travis Hunter should play this game, but I think he's going to. Dion's excited. Travis wants to play, and I think he's going to let him play. And I'd rather him not because it's Stanford and Stanford sucks. Do we think but, limited snap count maybe? I hope. I hope. I don't want him to come out here and get hurt again. So we'll see what happens. That sounds like riveting talk for the CFB Top 25 show. Mm. Um, but uh, so uh, if Travis Hunter and Shiloh play, I say take the spread. It's what, 11 and a half? Yep, 11 and a half. They should be able to spank Stanford by that much. But, you know. It's, it is uh, a Friday night game. It's a which Friday. Is strange. Uh, you just never know what happens on this Friday Isn't night Friday game. They're weird. The- it's Friday it's the 13th. Friday yes. the 13th. Stranger things have happened. Yeah, I just, you know, I don't feel 100% confident on their ability the, to score. Well, I just, I, man, I, I don't know. I got an iffy feeling about it. You know, I'm a hardcore primetime supporter, Coach yeah. Prime. Uh, shout out to my homie there. But, uh, you know, Colorado Moneyline, I think, is a safe enough bet. I just don't know. If, like I said, if Travis Hunter and Shiloh play, Go ahead and take that because I mean, Travis is going to, he's going to come out and ball, but my over under is, and this is the first time or my lock of the week is over under. I think that's the first time I've done that, but the Tennessee, Texas A and M game, give me that over 55 and a half. I think, uh, at what? 56 points. That's what? Like 20. That's 28 a piece. I think that's 20. East. I feel like that's doable. Um, Texas a and M super underrated. Tennessee Vols, they got it locked in last week. The Tennessee Vols, if you average it out, I'm pretty sure above 28. Texas A&M is right around there. Um, our defensive line has improved. The secondary is good, but I still think Texas A&M has enough weapons to put up some points. Um, I think it's going to end up in a shootout anyways, but I like that Tennessee – um, Texas A and M over fifty five and a half for my lock of the week. All right, I'm gonna. I feel a little crazy on this one, but I'm gonna take Washington Oregon over sixty seven. I really, I know that's a lot of points and makes me not feel good. That's thirty two a piece. I really think this game's gonna be somewhere in the forties and fifties. I think this is just gonna be nothing but scoring. Uh, these quarterbacks are throwing just ridiculous amount of yards and touchdowns. Oregon has better defense than Washington, but I don't know that they really have any either. This is one of those whack 12 games. Give me over the 67 for Washington, Oregon. It is ironic because we both have been saying take the under, take the under all year. Yep. That we're both saying take the I over, know. but I think that's I'm betting on a twat pack twelve game here, though. You're you're talking about Tennessee, SEC. I mean, I think mine's fair. Yeah, I would say so. But uh, now we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to get into our Tennessee uh, versus Texas A&M breakdown. Uh, we're going to break it down for you, give it, give you guys all of our thoughts and everything. So don't go nowhere, baby. The LTS show, Little Tangerine show will be right back.
These days, there are plenty of things to worry about, but keeping pests out of your home shouldn't be one of them. That's why you need Massey Services. Massey eliminates pests before they get inside. They start by carefully inspecting the inside and outside of your home, and then focus customized treatments on the outside. Best of all, your satisfaction is guaranteed or your money back. That's the Massey difference. Expect more and get it. Welcome, welcome back, baby, to the Little Tangerine Show. So we're going to go ahead and get into the moment that you all have been waiting for, the Tennessee Balls Breakdown. Uh, me and Casper were just talking about how excited we are that we went back to this format. It feels right. feels at home. Um, I feel like I need to give a speech. I'm not going to, but I feel like I could. Um, Casper's rocking out with those ball aluminum cups, by the way. Those things are, I need to give me some of those. I'll bring they're, you one tomorrow. You can try it. They're like Dixie cups, but you can wash them. And if you're a true alcoholic, those can come in clutch. Um, even if you're not an alcoholic, they go good with sweet tea as well. But it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter if the Braves just lost or maybe you're at a kid's birthday party and like when you're an adult, kids birthday parties are terrible. Yeah. Those can come in clutch. That is completely unsponsored, well, by the way. So other than the alcoholic thing, here's the thing about these cups. It's great because they're aluminum. Like they're, uh, I'm about to get, I uh, never mind. Home school nerd, but there are value. You know, <laughs> their insulating value is pretty solid because they're aluminum. Uh, they don't suck a lot of heat into your beverage, so the aluminum is nice for that. So Tennessee Vols. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna do a segue and I just I didn't have sorry. one. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. No, you're good. I just oh. I, I know you're super pumped that we're going back. I, but normally I'll be like, hey, you know, speaking of cups or something stupid, but I had no segue, so I was like, yeah. boom. Um, so Texas AM is coming to town to va- face the Tennessee Volunteers. This game's gonna be a 3 30 kickoff. Texas AM mm-hmm. is four and two, but Don't let that fool you guys, because they are better than they look. Their two losses have come to Bama, which, by the way, was a 26-20 game at home. And they also – now, they did lose pretty good to Miami earlier in the year, um, 48-33, but they have beaten Auburn, which is a respectable win. They beat Arkansas. Arkansas is not terrible. Um, obviously the Vols only loss came to the, to the Florida Gators in the swamp, which we are absolutely terrible in the swamp. So, um, I guess if you had to pick two words to describe how the Vols usually play in the swamp, it would be swamp ass. Um, but after that, we pretty much got it rolling. Uh, and for the first time in a long time, uh, their last game, they had a bye week last week, but their last game against South Carolina, we saw glimpses of that Tennessee Falls offense that we're used to seeing. The defense, however, specifically the defensive line, has been stellar. Um, we're like first and second, a lot of like defensive line pressure stats. Um, the matchup predictor has the Vols at 56.7% chance to win. The over under is, or the, uh, the spread is set at, what is it? The spread uh, is three points. Three. Yeah. Three and a half points. Um, which is probably fair because, I mean, really, this is going to come down to what Tennessee Vols offense that we see. Having Mays back really seemed to make a big difference um, in the offensive line specifically, but we don't know what offense we're going to get, and Texas A&M is respectable. Um, You know, Casper, what's some of the things that you're really going to be looking for in this game? Yeah. All right. So two things I want to I want to mention here. Uh, Tennessee's defense is really good, and I know that we still don't give them credit because we don't like Kamal Haddon and because I sorry. Whoa, whoa, me, whoa! Me, they... me, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> let me let me let, let, let me preface that. So, um, <laughs> so don't you sorry. drag me into that. Me, I got Big no Drewski, problem. Kamal, listen, look look at me in the eyes. I think you're a good player. This guy thinks you're a good player. Okay. For whatever reason. These idiots on Facebook and some of the idiots that I talk to throughout my job, throughout the week, 
you know, we're a little frustrated coming into the South Carolina game. However, I did specifically ask one of those today how they felt after that pick six. Uh, really turned some heads. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, listen, I, I think Tennessee's defense is going to be the difference in this game. If you go back and you look, uh, Tennessee's giving up less yards. Uh, Tennessee. As a Vols fan, this is something I am proud of, and I honestly didn't even see this until I pulled this page up to do this, but you realize that we have not given up more than 20 points in a game yet this year? That is Five pretty Five games impressive. into the season or whatever. Like Our defense I'm has been stellar. That. Our defense has yeah. been stellar. And like we said, we're running a bit of a hybrid offense. It's really, if you look at it smack dab and we look at the stats every season. Other than Florida. We gave up 29 to Florida, sorry. Yeah, but – we look at the stats every single week and it's literally like right down the money run versus pass. Like yardage is almost the same. I mean, it's, we're like right down the middle where, you know, historically Hopple's had like air it out offense, use the pass to set up the run, but now we're kind of using the run to set up. It's a little different. Uh, Maybe that's Halsey. I don't know the off the new offensive coordinator, but uh, it's really been, you know, it's a different team, but kind of similar, but you know, yeah, the defense has played great. It's the offense that struggled. Um, and a lot of people coming in this year. Now me and Casper, if you you know, if you listen to the show for a while, we've been saying Texas A&M is a sleeper. Everybody wrote them off last year. Listen, they lost three points. Okay. By three points to LSU at LSU last year. Okay. They lost to App State. Now, that one was at home, but they lost to App State by three points, which to me is still a respectable loss because App State's not terrible. Um, They lost to Mississippi Mississippi State, who was ranked 20th at the time, um, at Mississippi State. That was the third loss. They lost to Bama by four points on a questionable pass interference call or non-call, however you want to look at it, at the end of that game. That was their fourth loss. The fifth loss was South Carolina, which ended up being a decent team. They lost to them by six points. They lost to Mississippi by two points. Um, You know, they lost to Florida. Uh, They did lose to Auburn. I mean, they lost some games last year, but I mean, three points to Auburn. Uh, Now they got beat pretty good by Florida. Two, uh, sorry, three points, Mississippi. Uh, six points, South Carolina, four points, Alabama, two points. Uh, I'm sorry. They beat, uh, Arkansas. Now they lost pretty good to Mississippi state, but there was a lot of losses. Uh, again, LSU three points app state. I mean, they were like 30 ish points from having like a totally different record last year. And everybody just kind of cast them to the side and said, Oh, they suck. But I mean, that's they've got a lot of really good playmakers, and they're not as bad as a lot of people, uh, sp- uh, specifically Tennessee Vols fans sitting there eating at Hardee's at seven in the morning on Thursday um, in a big group. The Nega Vols, um, they think that the, the Texas A&M just sucks, and that's just not the case, dude. They, I mean, they're on their backup quarterback, but they've been balling out, dude. Um, I think a lot of people think that we're just going to skunk them. I just, I think that this is going to be a closer game than we'd like to admit. You done? Yes. All right. Um, <laughs> I think you, you, I mean, be honest with you, you summed up pretty well. Uh, out and about in Knoxville. I know that on the uh, post game show last week, I kind of said, "Hey guys," uh, to my fellow voluntolds out here in Knoxville, Tennessee. I don't need to see you talking trash on the internet. I don't want to see overconfidence. Texas A and M is a real football team. Uh, from Monday to Wednesday, I'm going to give that a grade of an A for Knoxville. So good job, guys, on that. Um, I've talked to quite a few people. Uh, obviously. As I've said before, I get to travel around different areas around East Tennessee for work. And I listen, I talk to Tennessee football when I come walking through the door. <laughs> That's what we do, man. I like to yeah. hear what different people say. And sometimes I hear crazy stuff. And sometimes I hear stuff I think is, you know, sensible. And sometimes I hear stuff from a different angle than I think of it. But uh, the respect for Texas A&M is there. Obviously, Big Drewski's been all about the uh, Texas A&M being underrated or whatever. This is a big game for Texas a and M. I I mean, if you look at their schedule, this kind of makes or breaks their year. 
Um, I know that sounds kind of crazy, but like if they don't win this game, that gives them three losses. They got to play Ole Miss, South Carolina, Mississippi State, LSU. They got some tough games on the road. If they lose this game, they got some tough games. Um, well, Jimbo, also, I know you go. You're good. I was just going to say, also, you know, I hate to say this because, like, I know how, like, Big Orange Nation can get about stuff. But if we come out and play well, we can kind of prove that we sort of got over that early season hump. But, like, realistically, if the Vols do somehow win out, which is unlikely, but if they somehow win out, we are kind of in the playoff talk. I mean, so this is a big game. Now, granted, we got some I, – I don't know that I can see us um, winning out at this point, you know, on the road at Bama, on the road at, you know, Kentucky, which is probably going to be a night game. Still got Georgia at home. But if we can come out and play solid, I think we're going to gain some respect back. And what's going to be nice is we're getting hot at the right time and we're going to be under the radar a little bit. But, uh, I mean, this is, you know, for the Vols, this is a big game and it's one that they got to get, you know. Yeah. So I, I 100% agree this is the one they have to get. I think when you look at our schedule, now that we've done talk about their schedule, look, we're coming into a hard part of the season for us, okay? We got AM, we got Kentucky on the road. I know a lot of y'all are sleeping on that Kentucky on the road game. Then we got to go to Bama. I mean, it's this is it right here. This is our season. This is our year. Um, coming into this year, you know, I know that I came on the show and did a 12 and 0 pick, and obviously I, that's busted. But a Big Drewski would tell you, I picked us to be nine and three, <laughs> kind of as the bottom. And I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> us to be nine and three coming through here. Um, we have to to get some wins in this next few games and they're going to be tough they're going to be tough we're gonna have to earn them so um looking forward to it looking forward to watching it i'm excited to watch this game i think it'll be a great football game Neyland's going to be checkerboard we had not talked about that yet uh Ooh, also yeah. checker I'm, gonna, Neyland. I'm gonna tell you guys a couple things that i saw on the internet today and i want a full disclaimer on this um i saw this on the internet okay i don't know what it was but i saw this on the internet and uh D. Williams maybe playing a little uh, little offense, and I Ooh. swear maybe an orange helmet. I, I didn't say it loud. I just I saw a picture. I don't know what to tell you. It got deleted. I don't I don't know what happened. Oh, conspiracy! Thing. This is a checkerboard game. But here's the thing: I was thinking about this, and sorry, I know I'm about to mess up your schedule for this uh, next minute here, but <clears throat> it's okay. I've already edited it twice. This is a And M home game. We only have one other big home game left, if we're being honest, after this, right? Mm-hmm. Georgia. We have to bring something out for Georgia. We've done dark mode. We've done checkerboard. What are we doing for Georgia? I don't Honestly, know. Honestly, bro, for... I know what Bama, you want. You want the traditionals, I know. But. For Bama and Georgia, I like that traditional. I, I, do. I get it, but I'm just saying, you know, that has potential to still be a night game on ESPN or CBS. I don't know. I, anyway. If we roll out anything else, I mean, have we've not done the actual smoke uniforms yet, have we? Uh, I think we did those. I we think did those, the Condridge Hall of the Way. Yeah, I think then. that was a smoke uniform for the year, um, but we'll see. I don't know. There was a tease on Twitter from a fake Twitter account about checkerboard uniforms. Hope we don't wear those. Um, by the time this podcast comes out on Friday, there will be a release on the uniforms, and me and Big Drewski will make a recording if we need to to add to this. But um, Or you can find it on our Facebook. Yeah, I mean, I'm, Green Show. I could live with the checkerboard mm-hmm. or even bringing back the Pat Summit thing, but, like, one yeah. no – one – like Yukon game or something like that. Don't roll the checkerboard out and like make us look just like clowns yeah. and then get out there and get our, you know, ass cheeks yeah. clapped by Georgia I, or something. But anyways, coming into this game, I think the keys to this game is going to be Tennessee's got to play defense and we got to let the offense roll. We have to let Joe Milton go. You know, that's what I said going to South Carolina. That's what I think you you agreed with going to South Carolina. Got to let him roll, right? I mean, he can either run it or he can't. Let's find out. This is another one of those games. Big yeah. time football. This is so, big time football. SEC football. Do it or don't. Yeah. I mean, so like my keys to the game are basically we got to get pressure on the quarterback, or I should say continue to get pressure on the quarterback like we have. Yeah. I've watched a couple of Texas A&M games. Their offensive line has struggled with false start penalties and stuff like that. At home, 
So I think with the Neyland noise, if we can continue to get pressure, they're on their backup quarterback, um, which, I mean, he's pretty solid. Um, uh, I don't know if Wigman is back or not. Um, ESPN's got him listed as the um, passing leader. I think they got Johnson in at the back uh, backup, which he is Brad Johnson's uh, son. But uh, if we can get, get pressure to him, get him rattled, um, really put some pressure on that O-line, I think our defense has a chance to make some things happen. On the offensive side, like Casper said, term like we said you know against uh or the last game against south carolina let him let him rip dude if he can't do it then we can talk about it but don't put clamps on the guy and then have all of all nations saying oh we need to, you know like turn him loose man he's either going to do it or not let it you know he was like last game uh, we played he was calling check downs audibles he actually looked like he was running the offense and looked like an SEC quarterback. Now, he made some mistakes, but turn him loose, man. I want to see the read option um, and all that. And I think the third thing for me is we, we've we got to continue to get – and I swear, I don't know, like I said, if someone from Tennessee, like, you know, football's <laughs> listening Heupel. to this it's or whatever. Okay, he <laughs> uh, listens to us. Josh, Heupel, we love you. Josh Hopple, let me tell you something. We're not going to get a tattoo of you, but we. I'm not going to get a tattoo of your face on my body, but I do think that you are phenomenal, and you look like you know where at least a couple good fishing spots are. But we need to continue to get the ball in the hands of the playmakers, Samson, Squirrel. I don't care if it's end of rounds. I don't, you know, screens are all fine and good. But we've got to do more. I mean, have Squirrel or Samson line up. You know, have D. Williams line up in the Wildcat. Like, give me something. But we've got to figure out how to get the ball in the hands of our playmakers. Um, but I think if our defense plays the way they're doing, we turn Joe Milton loose. If we can get the ball in the hands of our playmakers, I think we'll be good. I, like I think the offense will open, and then I guess if I had a fourth one, it would be dude, put that ball on the ground, dude. Um, but uh, what are some of your keys? That, just like I said, things you're looking for. Yeah, I mean, obviously, like I said, kind of agreeing with you. Play, play defense. Step number one, we have to, we have to have a defensive play that we've had coming into this game. I think they got to play good. Um, step number two is going to be let Milton do his thing. Man, we got to have confidence in him. I saw confidence in him in that South Carolina game that I haven't seen all year. I think that confidence can go a long way. I think that uh, sometimes faking it till you make it is the way to get it done. And um, I think that. Uh, there's a lot of people, unfortunately, in this area that we live in that don't really care to watch Joe Milton continue to play football. I'm not one of them. You're not one of them. But um, let him go, man. Let him do his thing, I Joe. mean, my thing it, is, you know, if he's dropping back and slinging it, I can deal with some mistakes, a pick here and there, especially as hard as he throws. Like we, you said it before the season started, <sighs> there's going to be some tip ball interceptions and stuff. But, man, I just want to see him dropping back with confidence and just doing yeah. it. Like, you know, yeah. and – but, yeah, both yeah. teams on paper. What? And kind of to add to your last thing there, get the ball to playmakers. Look, here's the thing. Take some shots, man. Run the ball, take some shots. Go back to old school, run the ball, make them – Make them defend it and then throw the ball. And we got to take some shots. We need big plays in this game against Satan. If we don't have any big plays, we don't win this game. That's my personal opinion. And run, work that hurry up, man. Where's that yes. been? You yes. know, all game. Don't, don't look. We did that against South Carolina. We looked good. When we were Dude, busy. it's, it's borderline unstoppable, but yeah. both teams are pretty evenly matched on paper. Uh, Texas A&M is averaging 420 and a half yards per game. The Vols are averaging 466 yards per game. Um, they're averaging 275 yards passing. We're at about 235. Um, they're averaging about 144 yards rushing, which the Vols have shut the, the run game down pretty well this year. The Vols are averaging 231 yards rushing, almost 100 yards more per game. And like I said, Right down the middle, the Vols are averaging 235 in the air, 231 on the ground. Boom, right down the middle, okay? Um, the Texas A&M Aggies have allowed uh, 268 yards per game. The Vols have averaged two, uh, 308 yards per game. 
Um, and most of that has actually been on the ground. The Vols are averaging on average, uh, or sorry, they're allowing on average 192 yards through the air, 115 on the ground. So um, the Vols defense needs to show up. The, you know, the, the Vols fan base needs to show up. In the words of Sterl the Pearl, the Tennessee Vol Nation, that power T is powerful. Yes. Show up. Get rowdy, get loud, and lose your voice. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, to close this out, listen, you know, Texas A&M's a f- good football team, man. They're coming in to town. The ball's been up, down, all around. Both teams have a almost identical T in the middle of their logo. Um you know, Texas A&M, their fans are pretty rocking. They know how to, you know, barbecue some brisket. Um, honestly, it, they're looking pretty good coming into this game. So picking this this game is, uh, who am I kidding? Vols are going to win. Give me the Vols. That's my pick. Um, it's always going to be my pick. Vols by 100. Um, yeah, give me the Tennessee Vols. I'm betting the over. And I want to see some some good football, baby. A lot of Rocky Top being played. That's my pick, and I'm sticking to it. I like it. Give me Tennessee. I also want everybody to know that I did my job, and I bet on Texas A&M because I haven't won a bet in 20 years. So I did bet $1 on Texas A&M money line so we can win. I'll do this against South Carolina. So I just want to let you all know I've done my part as a fan, and I will be tuned in. Rocky top all the way. Let's go Vols by 50, baby. All right. I like it. I like it. Um, We went through the keys of the game. Um, A lot of times we go over what we're throwing on the grill. I'm still up in the air about that. I do need to go to Academy and work on those deals, though. Uh, That the smoking wood and all that stuff's on sale. So I'm definitely going to probably try to make a a trip out Mm. there, but I don't know if I'll be throwing anything on the grill with us going up there. You're going down Chattanooga and fishing, so you're probably not grilling or nothing. So uh, probably not. Uh, so it's probably like wings or pizza ones too. Yeah. So, uh, but um, anything else you want to cover? I, I mean, I. F- <laughs> it's, we- Thank y'all for tuning back into Little Tangerine Show. It's been an hour, and it's been a great hour. Thank you for listening. It has been awesome, uh, but. Um, I don't really have anything else. We already did our, you know, dumbass comment of the week, did our uh, locks of the week. Uh, yeah, but uh, until next time, baby, this is Big Drewski. I'm Casper, the co host, and we are going to roll on out of here, baby. Peace later. These days, there are plenty of things to worry about, but keeping pests out of your home shouldn't be one of them. That's why you need Massey Services. Massey eliminates pests before they get inside. They start by carefully inspecting the inside and outside of your home, and then focus customized treatments on the outside. Best of all, your satisfaction is guaranteed or your money back. That's the Massey difference. Expect more and get it. When I was diagnosed with cancer, it felt like my whole world came tumbling down. Patient Advocate Foundation is here for you, providing free one-on-one practical support to patients with a cancer diagnosis. Call us at 800-532-5274. Patient Advocate Foundation can assist in navigating disability benefits and health insurance options. PAF also helps in accessing vital services, medications, and financial resources for both medical and household expenses. Visit patientadvocate.org or call 800-532-5274.